e che la resteranno sempre nostra 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 And hopefully that was enough of a segue to allow some press photos to happen. Okay. Next speakers. Got Amar Anwar. Amar doesn't need much of an introduction for anybody who comes to demos and sees him regularly, but Amar's a very public human rights lawyer. He's also been representing Clara Ponsipi. Thanks very much, Amar. Thank you. When uh, Pedro Sanchez came to power last year, there was a great deal of hope expressed. People talked about him being a socialist and how there would be a change. And Pedro Sanchez himself said that he wanted a political solution rather than a judicial solution. How little political solution has there been over the course of the last year? And I expressed the idea to Pedro Sanchez when I spoke at the Diana when over a million and a half people marched last year and I said that if a political gangster walks into your family's house, takes your family hostage, holds them hostage for a year and puts a gun next to your children's heads and says now sit down and negotiate, that is not a political solution, that is state terrorism and that is exactly what the Spanish government has operated on Catalonia. So in the last few weeks, and it isn't simply a case of this just has happened over the last few years, this has been happening for years and years and years. We saw it in October the 2017. We saw it when the Catalan politicians were arrested and in the heart of Europe. And we said it last year when Clara Ponsati faced an extradition warrant and we drew the analogy. That if tomorrow Boris Johnson Nicola Sturgeon decided she wanted to call a referendum without the permission of Boris Johnson, no Section 30 order. And Nicola called a referendum. And Boris Johnson was to send 15,000 members of the Metropolitan Police, armed like Robocops, paramilitaries, unleash the water cannons, unleash the batons, the plastic bullets on the millions of people in Scotland trying to vote. And Nicola Sturgeon was taken into custody and half the cabinet were taken into custody and were in Barney prison and in courts and bail and the other half of the cabinet were actually sent into exile and fighting extraditions across Europe. People would think that we were absolutely crazy. Well, that's exactly what's taken place with Catalonia, the Catalan politicians, and there isn't just nine Catalan political prisoners today. There are 40 people who are in custody because they are political prisoners. And I asked the question, and some of us who watched live footage in Catalonia, in Spain taking place as the minute by minute approach was adopted to what was supposed to be a quiet exhumation of that fascist dictator, of that dictator who was friends with Adolf Hitler and the only fascist dictator in Europe that went to his bed peacefully. And I asked the question of Pedro Sanchez, what is the point? of exhuming General Franco's remains when your thugs in uniform still dance to the tune of General Franco. Nine Catalans sentenced to 100 years for exercising the democratic referendum. We saw the Spanish state unleash an orgy of violence against the Catalan people. 600 injured, four people lost an eye, plastic bullets, batons, 40 political prisoners, and last summer, of course, our own Clara face that tradition with sentences threatened of up to 32 years for rebellion and once again we prepare for a new warrant. A warrant has been executed against Carlos Puigdemont and we also wait in the coming days for a warrant to be executed against Clara Ponsetti and I say this, that as a country we cannot be complicit in the silence of the European Union. We have to give solidarity to the Catalan people when in the history of our Catalan people for the last hundred years you have had nine out of eleven Catalan prison uh, presidents jailed, imprisoned, or executed. It's time to change the course of history. 
Silence is not an option for this failed state. Silence is not an option for Spain. We have to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, in our thousands, in our millions, with the Catalan people, because it's not a question of if, it's when Catalonia will be free. Thank you. Thanks very much, Alan. Next uh, speaker, doesn't need much of an introduction either, He's the former Minister of Education for Catalonia, currently uh, Professor St Andrews, uh, Clara Ponsetti. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today and for showing support. Uh, thank you. After Amer, I really don't know what else to say, really, that happens all the time. Uh, so, just let me just use you know, a couple of minutes to pay homage to the Catalan youngsters who are on the streets. Els carrers son vostres, joves catalans, estudiants catalans que ens esteu demostrant que no us conformeu, que no accepteu viure sota aquesta autocràcia que esteu decidits a guanyar la llibertat. Moltes gràcies. Gràcies, Andrea, gràcies, Xènia, gràcies, Paula, que sou evacuades, tancades, perquè estàveu en una manifestació. Gràcies a tots els presoners que tenim ara, que són molt més que els meus companys, als quals també envio la nostra salutació i la nostra solidaritat. El que està passant a Catalunya ara mateix és Europa defensant-se a les trinxeres de la democràcia. Una altra vegada. Democrats in Europe must acknowledge that we are defending democracy in Europe. The trenches of democracy are being fought in the streets of Barcelona, in the roads of Catalonia, in the airport of Barcelona. The streets belong to the people. We will, we will win. Catalonia will be a republic. We shall overcome. Thank you very much.